to see. All right. Okay. So um, I want to be sure if you can see my screen. Let me know in the chat. Can you see my screen? So let, let me move the chats to a different, uh, different screen. Okay. All right. So yes, you can see my screen from James Shakir, Shakirat and uh, Precious. Yeah, sorry if I don't you know, pronounce your name well. Um, apologies for that. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the Mirror app. Uh, I think what I'll do is to show you uh, how we can you know, get this app first, how we can download this app. Of course, I've, I've explained this in the past, right? So basically, basically uh, the website is uh, you know, mirror.com. I think someone can share this in the uh, Discord uh, room. So the website is simply mirror.com. And if you can't see this well, I would zoom in. So mirror.com, right? And uh, all you have to do is, uh, you know, create an account, right? So uh, you visit this website for the first time, uh, you create an account. And I'm sure you know what the app is used for, but I'm also going to uh, go back to the landing page. Um, okay, so someone is saying we have the link already in Discord. Okay, all right. So uh, mirror is basically a collaboration tool um, as you can see, it's an online collaborative whiteboard platform to bring teams together anytime, anywhere. So uh, it's simply, you know, you can you can use it um, just like you use a fig jam, right? But it has a, it's it's more robust in the sense that it was actually built, you know, primarily for a collaboration, and um, it has a lot of features that I I I think. Uh, you know, more recently, Fig Jam are also, you know, adding those features uh, on their own application. Uh, but um, this is one of the main tools we use uh, when when coming up with uh, things like, uh, you know, user flows and all that. Uh, and we've been using this tool for quite some time. Um, and yeah, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, how to use this tool today. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm going to take like, you know, I'm going to give a general overview that would also, you know, get to use some of the tools, you know, one after the other. So um, you can check out the website, you know, you can see uh, some of the things you can use this for, for brainstorming, for diagramming, you know, for meetings and workshops, uh, for, you know, having Scrum events. Scrum events is basically, uh, you know, like brainstorming, but now you're focusing more on, um, um, you know, the product at hand uh, or probably the task at hand. You're trying to come up with an implementation and then you are you know collaborating and thinking of you know, the best uh, processes and um, you know coming up with uh, like your kanban um, map where you put in uh, the different tasks belonging to different people and the, the deliverables you know uh, the time to deliver on those products um, yeah so uh, we also have mapping uh, research and uh, design and also for coming up with strategic planning. So basically we have a, a bunch of templates, right? Uh, this application has a bunch of templates that, uh, you know, you can work with. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, I think the, the website has, uh, you know, like explained basically everything you can do with the application. Um, so the next thing you would want to do is to go ahead and sign up, right? Create an account. So you click on sign up. And uh, you know you put in these details, right? So you create, you put in your name, your email, and the password. Um, you agree to the terms. If you want to receive updates, you know you go ahead and uh, select this option as well, and then you sign up. Uh, or you can choose to make it easier for you. You can sign up with Google, right? Or you can sign up with these other options. Uh, you know you have Slack, uh, Microsoft. I think, um, uh, yeah, this is Office 365, I, I, I believe. Uh, then the Apple, you, know, you can sign up using an Apple ID or, if, or your Facebook, um, you know, your social media handle as well, Facebook. Okay, so uh, by default, these are the things you have for free, uh, three editable boards. Uh, you have, uh, you know, the core integrations, uh, unlimited uh, team members, uh, templates, and uh, the basic uh, uh, attention management. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, these are, these, are the free, uh, these are the free things you can use. Uh, when you are working with a free account, basically. So you can always upgrade, right? But uh, for our, our class, I think this is what we're working with. You know, my account is basically a free account. Um, but yeah, if, if you are working on, you know, large scale projects, then you might also want to pay uh, for the uh, pro account or for the premium account. So I am going to sign in. I already have an account and I'm already signed in on the desktop application. So you also have a desktop application and, um, 
yeah so for the desktop application i think you can download you can download the desktop application and i keep okay so let's let's see um yeah so most times what i do is i search but i'm very sure we should have that on the mirror for devices okay so let's see i'm going to click on this all right and yeah you can download uh you know the mobile uh, you can download the mobile app right you can download the desktop app uh, i am currently using uh, the desktop app for uh, intel max um yeah but this is what makes this really uh, amazing right the fact that you can also have an app running on uh, you know your android ios or even your tablet and uh, you know you can collaborate basically uh, without having to use your laptop or without having to visit the uh, the website right so i think this is great and you can also download this for interactive displays um okay so uh, let's assume you've downloaded this you know for your windows machine or for the mac uh, i don't think they have a version for linux uh, operating systems yet but of course there are multiple ways to um you know have some of these apps run on a linux machine if you're using a linux machine uh, but i believe most of you should be using uh, intel uh, you know macbooks or you know windows um, operating systems okay so once you have this downloaded i'll go ahead and close this uh, tab and uh, let's move on to the desktop application so um, you open this for the first time. This is what you um, you would see. Uh, basically, I have multiple workspaces here, right? So I have some workspaces I've created here, and uh, let's just go ahead and you know talk about a quick overview. What do we have here? Uh, you see, I have multiple uh, boards, right, that I've created, and uh, you know some of them I can only I only have a, you know view only permission done uh, because most of them were shared with me. So all I had to do was um, you know see what that person wanted me to see i could not edit those files um and uh yeah so um yeah so the first thing we have here you can see you have the recent boards uh and this would show you like you know some of the recent boards you've uh, attended to um, i would show you some of the complex things we've done with this and some uh, basic things you can also do so i would open up some of these items for you to see um then uh, we i also have like a start board okay all right so uh and currently i i have like a team account right so you see i have seven users uh, in this team uh, and uh, yeah so this is basically uh, the details you have here are basically tied to you know that particular team that you're trying to or that you are assessing you can check your team profile you can see the users on this team uh you can see the list of apps and integrations that you've added to you know your account and uh, what this means is that you can actually integrate this you know like slack or you know some other uh, tools so that when things are happening here, you can basically get notification. Uh, you can integrate Google Images. You know, you see that we have chats, icon finder, and uh, of course, you know, you can install um, more apps, right? You can click on this and install more apps. Uh, after clicking on that, it took me down to uh, the web. So I'm going to bring that here again. Okay, so you see, um, uh, clicking on that link brought me down to this page, right? So I can actually install uh, you know, Google Meet extension, um, Jira extension for um, those of you that will be using Jira uh, for project management, basically. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Figma plugin as well. We have for Teams, we have for Slack, Asana. Asana is also, uh, you know, like Trello uh, for task management. You know, you have Airtable. So I believe you know some of these tools uh, you see for Zoom, right? And when you integrate these tools into um, Miro, it makes it easier for you. Uh, to you know perform some kind of operations like uh, you know you're trying to schedule a meeting on zoom uh, you can easily do that you know directly uh, through the uh, app integration that you've done so i believe you understand that uh, if you have any question i'm also looking at the chat so go ahead and drop those questions in the chat um yeah so you can see you know your users i, I don't want to click on some of this uh, because of course you see i have to upgrade this account before we can uh, you know um, attend to uh, some of these uh, options here so, but of course you can create multiple teams you see i have multiple teams uh, here and uh, i would go back to the board okay so um i can invite a member right i can invite a member uh, for now i don't think i can do that because i have to upgrade uh, but you also have like a learning center you know by clicking on this you see we have um uh kind of like getting started uh, you know detail you can click on this it's kind of like a tutorial right so it will walk you through how to perform some of these uh, 
some of these things here, like you know, the content creation, collaboration, you know, to explain some of the various parts to you when you also click on this. And these are just you know step-by-step -step tutorials. So this is in four steps, five steps. So this is basically um the learning center, and of course, you can also search for resources. Okay, so you have your notification, you know, you have notification here. If something happens and you are not available, of course, you have a notification to show you, you know, what has happened, you know, basically. Uh, similar to what you have on Figma. And uh, you can also, you have a filter option. You know, you can filter to see, okay, the boards that are owned by me, right? And, uh, you know, the boards that are not owned by me. Uh, yeah, and um, you can also see the boards owned by everybody, basically, okay? So you can change the view. You know, this is currently displayed in grids. You can change it to lists. So this is just, you know, various uh, things you can do here. Um, and the next thing I would want to do is, uh, yeah, you can create a new team, right? With the plus icon have here. Um, and of course, you can also create a new file. So let us do let us do this. I'm going to come back to um let's go, let's go down to top skill. And uh, I just have three items here, and I doubt if I can create more. So of course, it's asking me to upgrade. So what I what I'm going to do is to probably delete one. Uh, I'm very sure that I don't need everything here. So um Okay, so basically this is just, uh, I use this to design um, a bunch of API services. I was trying to explain, you know, some things to my team. Uh, I think maybe I can delete this one. Let's see. Okay, so I think this was a class we had in the previous cohorts and then, uh, you know, we used Mirror to explain how to quickly, uh, I think it was, it was a research session if I remember. Um, so maybe I might, uh, might create a new team because I don't want to really delete any of this or I'll migrate that later. Um, so I'm going to just call this, um, uh, UI, UI UX cohort two. Let's go. So let's see if I can do that. Um, okay. So how can I start for free? Uh, can I start for free? And how it starts for free. Um, okay. So probably this is because <laughs> I already have some teams created. I'm not sure. Um, hmm. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, create a new, I can't. I'm going to I'm going to delete and some of these uh, some of these files are not owned by me. So remember, as I told you earlier, you can only create you know three uh, three boards, right? You can only create three boards. Uh, I'm simply going to um, use any uh, any option here. I think I can delete this one. I don't think I need this again, so I can delete this. Okay. All right. So uh, I am still asked to upgrade. Oh yeah, I have to create a new board. Okay, so I have to create a new uh, team board. Okay. Okay, so I was asked to upgrade because I kept trying to create a project and I think that was a mistake, right? So um, you can actually have three projects in here. You can actually have one project and I think with three boards, right? So I have one project and uh, I just created a third board because I've deleted one of the boards, right? So I clicked on new board. And uh, you see, we have a bunch of templates, and we'll be talking about the templates soon. Um, when you click on show all, you see we have a whole lot of templates. And this is one of the major reasons why I love you know, this app, because you have, um, so you want to implement like a mind map, you know, concept map. And uh, with time, with time, you get to understand, uh, you know, this set, of, uh, um, um, this set of diagrams and when to use them. But, uh, you know, you have a bunch of templates that would uh, be of help. I use templates, you know, rather than creating everything from scratch all the time, um, you know, and this tool, this tool can be used by, you know, designers, engineers, you know, product managers, basically um, for any kind of collaboration session, because you would probably see a template for your need. You will, I think I would say 80% of the time, you know, see a template that would fit, you know, your use case, right? Uh, if you are working, uh, if you are trying to look for templates for agile workflows, for mapping and diagramming, for research and design, right? Um, yeah, so you, you would probably see uh, a, a template that will fit your use case on this app. All right, so let's uh, let's close this for now. We'll come back to this. 
uh, I will just uh, open up the, uh, um, the untitled document, which is a new document we just created. And you see, you are asked to select a template. Um, yeah, so you're asked to select a template, but for now, we're not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to explain like, you know, some of the uh, tools uh, we have around here. So let me edit this file. I'm just going to change the name to um, Miro uh, tutorial file and description. Okay, uh, a tutorial file teaching uh, 2.4 plus. All right, so you can, of course, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, yeah. So this is saved. Uh, this is saved. So you see that uh, I did not really have to click on it. Saved automatically. So I just have to you know click outside that area to take that off. Now we're on the free version, okay? And uh, the first thing you see here is the settings, the settings for this specific board, right? This specific board we're working on. So you have board settings, you can start this board, which is basically going to have this board listed on your um, in a list of favorite boards, right? You can make a copy which to duplicate the board. Uh, you can move this to other teams, right? Or other projects. Uh, you can set a start view and I'm going to show you Setting a start view is basically what you also do in Figma, where you say you right click on a particular item and you right click on a particular artboard and you set that artboard to be um, a thumbnail. So um, it's almost similar. Uh, the difference here is when you set an item as a start view, you can have multiple things on this page, right? Multiple things scattered everywhere. But whenever you open this file, it's going to start from that particular view, right? And I will show you an example as we proceed, but it's going to always it's going to always drop you on that particular view, right? So you start from that view. Um, yeah, and I think it's a very good, um, it's a very good way to um, set the entry point of this file. So that when you share this file with uh, maybe uh, your partners or your friends or you know the clients, you know once they open this file, they know where to start from and they're able to walk through the page without being lost, uh, you know, in uh, you know information. So uh, we also have board history. Uh, board history will show you like uh, you know some of the changes you've made over time and you can always revert you know to a previous history and i think you also have similar um, thing on figma and I, i'm trying to i'm trying to compare these things because i know most of you already have experience working with figma so it'll be easy for you to you know like uh, understand uh, how they both um, uh, you know the, the features that they both have and uh, you know, the similarities right okay so um i'll go back to the settings yeah so that is for the board settings and of course you can also delete the board uh, then for the preference, you know, you can set your navigation uh, device, uh, whether you want to use a um, trackpad or you want it to switch automatically when you have a mouse plugged in, you know, you can set uh, if you want to see the grid or you want it to be dotted and uh, grids or you don't want any grid at all. So it's referring to the grid you're seeing on the screen, right? So if you don't want the grid at all, none takes off the grid, right? And um, you can have the dotted line, you can also have the, uh, the dotted grid, sorry, or you can also have the line grid, okay? And uh, what does it mean to have a snap to grid? Uh, basically, uh, if we don't have this turned on, uh, when we create any item here, maybe like a rectangle, let's just create a shape. So I created a shape, and uh, I'm simply going to set uh, the background of this shape to yellow. So uh, I'm going to explain what I just did though, but let's assume I move this item, click on this, no, sorry, click on this, okay. So let's assume I move this item around, you see this item is, is moving freely, right? But with the uh, snap to bridge, um, let's see, let's snap to bridge, uh, preference, okay. So when you have the snap to grid turned on, uh, you're able to actually snap this to a specific grid. So you see, just look carefully, you know, uh, it's not it's not touching any grid, but when I drop it here, it will try as much as possible to ensure that it snaps this item to a particular grid, right? So that's the, that's the meaning. It's going to try as much as possible to snap this item to a particular grid. Can you, can you see what just happened? So same thing applied here. It's just snaps it to that specific grid. So uh, that's basically the functionality in there, um, you know, snap to grid. All right, so back to the settings again, uh, back to preference. We have align objects, which means you can have multiple uh, objects. And uh, you know, these are automatic features that can you know, align these objects. If you don't want those features, you can turn that off, right? scroll bars you know you want to be able to scroll around uh, and um, yeah if i turn that off of course you can still scroll around but that scroll bar is no longer going to show so um i think i think i am probably on full screen let me take off the full screen and let's see so you see this uh, scroll bar right here so you can either 
you know, turn that on or off. As, as I zoom in, you see the scroll bar shows up. You can choose to turn that off if you want to. Uh, let's go back again, back to the settings. And um, yeah, so uh, one object dimension. Uh, let us verify what this would do. So, so basically, you can you can always explore. You can always explore and try out uh, you know, some of these things. Of course, uh, I wouldn't be able to uh, you know explain every single uh, you know option. Uh, but yeah, I think I can also search about this later on and uh, uh, you know explain this to you. Uh, but so object dimensions, I uh, I pretty much think um, this is yeah, let's take this off. So I think this is um, okay. So let's see. Um, I'm going to turn that off. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I, I I don't think I I don't think yeah. So this this is uh, one of the features I would have to you know touch on later. Um, and uh, we'll just proceed without that for now. Okay, so uh, at least you understand that you know on the preference you can actually uh, you know see the preference of um, the uh, the board right the board preference you know the preference of uh, you know your uh, navigation uh, your grids uh, you know the objects scroll bars and uh, yeah like we we will get down to uh, shortcuts right so this is just going to open a page you know showing you all the shortcuts you need so. Um, you know, the shortcut for creating a rectangle with arrow with uh, the oval shapes or the ellipse shape, the line, the pen. You know, some of these shortcuts are similar to some other tools we used in the past, I believe so. Uh, you have this option as well, the select tool and the hand tool, right? And um, yeah, I can see. Okay, all right. So we have. Um, we have a bunch of other shortcuts, you know, you can use for, of course, copying and pasting. So I am, I am seeing this icon here because I'm using the Mac. Uh, on the Windows, this should be Control, right? Control plus C, Control plus B, Control plus X to cut, you know, and um, a bunch of shortcuts that uh, you, you are familiar with. And this is, this is also what you need to understand. As someone in UX, you are designing a tool and you want to embed a shortcut. You see that they are using shortcuts that you are familiar with, and they are not, you know, creating uh, a bunch of shortcuts. Uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, so they're, they're using shortcuts that you're familiar with because this is how you do copying and pasting, you know, cutting, duplicating in a bunch of tools, right? You know, selecting all, you know, this is how you do, uh, uh, this is how you perform these operations in a bunch of tools. And they also make sure that, uh, you know, they give you shortcuts that you are definitely familiar with, right? You know, rectangle, oval, and, and all of that. So, um, yeah, so what you just get there is a list of shortcuts that you can play around with, okay? And um, follow all threads means, you know, as notifications are coming up, you know, you are able to see every single notification popping up. The reason for this is because you can have multiple people collaborating on a file, right? You want to be able to see what has happened, you know, in your absence, right? You don't want to limit, uh, you don't want to limit the kind of notifications you receive. So you want to be notified about every single reply or interaction happening on this board. Okay, so send to interactive display. You are just trying to send your display, you know, to a different uh, interactive display that is connected uh, to your application or that is connected to your machine. So uh, let us leave that for now. And the profile setting, of course, is to take you down to your profile. Uh, you set up the profile of this particular account. So I'm going to close that. Um, yeah, uh, but I believe you you understand, you know, your profile setting, of course. So. Um, this is notification, you know, giving you like feeds, what have been happening here. And um, uh, this option is to export, right? So clicking on export, you can export this as an image, as a PDF, uh, you can export this or save it as a template so you can reuse this later. Uh, you can also uh, you know, download uh, a backup, uh, a board backup, right? So which means uh, you're downloading like the previous version, you know, like back in history. Um, and then you can export this uh, into a CSV, uh, you can you can export this as an embedded uh, you know a link uh, that you can then share with a developer or maybe like a team to drop this uh, uh, file inside a web page right or even on figma uh, on uh, on notion for example so when you drop this as an embed all you have to do is copy this set of item you can drop this on notion you know assuming your team is working with notion you know for collaboration when you drop this into the notion file it's going to uh, preview or render this preview inside your notion. You can also see, um, you know, uh, yeah, so you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say. I can click on this, it has been copied. I can paste this within notion and it will render this uh, similar to what happens on Figma, right? You can, you can paste a Figma link uh, 
the measurements to render that as well. So uh, you can set the width and height, and uh, you can also like you know drop this on your website, right? And uh, yeah, for those of you that will be uh, you know creating um, creating like uh, uh, like a case study, for example, right? You can have all your case study implementations here, you know, the user journey map and you know all those stuff, and then you can uh, you can copy the uh, iframe file or the link and drop it probably in Notion or on your web page if you have a you know a dedicated website for yourself, right? So uh, we're not going to go into detail on that, but at least we should know that that is possible. Just in case someone on your team is asking, okay, can we embed this on our presentation? Yes, you can. All right, so um, let us, uh, yeah. So I can see people are in the waiting room and they're not being admitted. Please admit them. Okay, so you can also search, right? You can search for a component, or you can search for an item. So let's see uh, if I search for, um, so let's let's see if I have uh, can I do that? Hello world. I, I doubt if you can let, let's just try this, right? Can we search for a specific uh, oh yeah you can okay so you can search for a specific uh, you know text uh, or objects right and you see it took us down to that uh, item. So let us zoom in once again. Let's delete this. Yeah, let's zoom out. Okay, so um I think the final thing we have here is what I've explained previously, right? Apps and integration. Uh, we don't have to go back there. Um, if you're just joining, I, I think um, probably when this video, when we're done with the class, you know, you can always rewatch and uh, yeah, see our explanations uh, around apps and integrations. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, yeah, let's explore this. So basically, these are you know some of the apps, right? So you see, uh, show apps, right? And when I click on this, you know, you can create a timer, you can create um, uh, a voting uh, session, kind of like a poll, right? Kind of like a poll. Uh, please turn off your camera for those of you joining. Uh, turn off your camera, okay? All right, yeah. So uh, we have like the presentation mode, um, and presentation mode is basically you know distraction free. Uh, you take off all those uh, items and you can present this to your team, right? Without having so uh, similar to what you do on Figma when you use the shortcut Control plus uh, dots, right? Uh, it will take off um, every uh, item that can lead to distraction. And then you can you know, preview this properly uh, on the full screen. So this is presentation mode. Uh, let's take off the presentation mode. All right. And um, yeah, so uh, you, can, you can see more apps, right? Video charts, you know, charts. Uh, so which means you can have people, you can communicate with your teammates, right? Uh, within the application. Uh, I've not really explored the video chat option, but this is also impressive. So which means uh, you can probably set up a video chat. And of course, this is on the paid plan. Uh, but this is really good okay so uh let's talk about um yeah so this is to show uh, the collaborators uh, cursor so if you have people on this file working with you you can see what they're doing you can also choose to turn it off you know probably you don't want to see their cursor showing around your screen um yeah so these are basically reactions so you can drop uh, you know a bunch of reactions and others would see this you know um, and you, you can use this during brainstorming sessions of course you know for fun you can raise your hand right you can raise your hand and then, um, yeah, you can lower your hand. So people can then say, okay, Mark, you want to say something? Go ahead and uh, let's see what you, let's, let's, let's see what you have, uh, you know, to say. Let's hear what you have to say. You can drop feedback. I think this feedback is basically a mirror. Um, I think mirror feedback, I believe. Yeah, let's leave that for now. Um, okay, so, so of course, back to your profile, you know, uh, you can end up sharing this file. Right, so you can share this file. You can set the permission levels. Okay, I want the I want the um, I want the, uh, the the users or the the members of this particular board uh, to be able to view, comment, you know, edit, uh, or um, yeah, yeah. So you can you can do that and probably copy the link and share with others. Right, as a matter of fact, you can even put in their email, you know, to share with them uh, via Slack or Gmail. So um, yeah. All right, so uh, we've been able to explain and touch on some of these uh, you know, options here. Let's uh, let's talk about. So basically, what you have here is you know a simple way to zoom, you know, zoom in and zoom out. Uh, of course, you can do that with your mouse. You can do that with uh, the touchpad as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think we are seeing this again. Fit to screen. Uh, this is the fit to screen. Uh, this is the pin, right? So you can actually pin a specific session, and this is for full screen. All right, so. Um, I'm going to take this off because
because this is uh, asking us to rate the experience uh, with the search option that we just used. Uh, the experience was pretty good. I'm not rating for now. Um, yeah, so this is for our navigation menu. So basically, you know, a lot of people think that these are the only items we have here, but there are more, right? So uh, there are more items. Let's start from here. I wouldn't be able to cover every single one of them, but I believe uh, I would be able to like, you know, categorize them and make you understand, uh, you know, what to find within that category. So uh, let's take this off. The first item you see in here is the template option, right? So it's just there, you know, you can always use that template option. Let's assume, let's assume we're working on, uh, we're trying to come up with a diagram and uh, we're trying to come up with a diagram from the cost, for the customer journey. All I have to do is uh, use, click on use, I can click on preview, you know, to see what this is all about, right? About the template, right? The detail about the template. You see the creator of this template. And uh, yeah, so after looking at that, you can just say use prefilled or use blank templates. The blank template is basically going to create a blank, you know, version of this template for you. Uh, a prefilled template is going to give you like, uh, you know, sample data uh, within that template. So I just clicked on a uh, use prefilled template and you can see uh, we have, um, bunch of detail, you know, showing the, uh, the user uh, journey, the user journey, right? The first time user journey, and this is an example, right? And this is pretty uh, you know, impressive. So you can just create this and, uh, you know, uh, edit this, right? So what was the user's feeling? What was the user's step? You know, step one, step two, uh, the important steps, you can, you know, append the key sign here to show that these are key steps, uh, you know, down to step five. And then the user's feeling, the user's thoughts. So we'll get to do this. We'll teach you how to create, you know, these maps. Um, we'll have practical examples. Um, so, I mean, uh, the, the, the classes are getting more interesting with time. So uh, let's take this off for now. So we're able to create uh, a simple template, you know, um, from the template, uh, um, from the template uh, set here. And then the next item we have here is, uh, you know, to create a bunch of text. So um, every single object that you create has a certain, uh, you know, number of properties, right? So you see, I can adjust the size of this item by simply dragging. I can also adjust from here, right? The font size. I can change the font style or the font face. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So I can also I can also make this bold. So let's let's put in some text here. I will say hello world once again. So uh, by selecting this, you know, I can make this bold, right? Uh, I can make this italicized. I can make this underlined. You know. These are basic, uh, you know, styles, right? Uh, strike true, you know, to put in that, uh, yeah, to simply strike true. Okay, so Control Z. Let's come back to what we have now. Uh, we can set alignment, right? So you can align to left, you can align to right, you can align to the center, um, and um, yeah, you can also uh, convert this into a list, you know, an ordered list or an ordered list. Um, you can also convert this into a link, right, to make it clickable. So I can say when you click on this, it goes to uh, HTTPS. Uh, top universe all right apply so this is a link and when you click on this link you know it's going to open up uh, top universe .org right on your browser so uh, i have that opened up in the browser you know right here so uh, let's go back again okay so uh, i'm going to take off the link okay all right, so you can you can change the color of this text, right? So uh, these are the properties. You know, you can set an highlight color. You know that would fill the background of that text. So that's a highlight color. Um, okay. So this is the uh, font. This is the text color. This is the highlight color. And uh, yeah, this is uh, you can set like the background the opacity, like the, the, the opacity of that particular text or the particular background. So so you see, we can set the opacity of that highlight background. Okay. And uh, you can also add a comment, right? So you, you jump on a particular file and there's something you're not comfortable with. You can click on it and drop a comment. Okay, uh, why did you use uh, these fonts instead of uh, fonts we have uh, selected in the uh, design system? Okay, so that's a very simple comment and I've sent this comment in right now. So uh, of course, someone can you know reply to your comment similarly to what you have um, uh, in uh, Figma, right? So, uh, and of course, you know, wh when I say to what you have in Figma, I'm not trying to compare things here. I'm basically trying to, you know, um, just give you like, um, uh, you know, like, like an example, because I believe most of us already have more experience working with Figma, right? So, you know, you have the comment system here as well. 
it works you know, uh, likewise. Okay, so um, let's dismiss this. Let us uh, delete these comments. Okay, let's just take this back. All right, so what we've been able to do is you know, create a, a particular object. These are the elements you can use. And uh, you know, after creating these, you can you know, touch the property. You can even lock an item, uh, which means you can no longer drag this item around, right? Uh, until you choose to unlock it. Um, yeah, so, all right. So uh, we have a bunch of properties here. You can also check those out later. Uh, the next thing we have here is your sticky notes. So you, know, you can have uh, multiple uh, sticky notes and you can write some text on that on the on the sticky note. So we can say, uh, you know, we are learning uh, use in your first time. If you have any question, please drop them in the chat. Okay. So uh, and of course you can you know apply some of these properties as well in here. Alignments, right? You see, this is our alignment. Let's zoom in so we can see this better. Okay. So you see, we can apply the alignment options that uh, you know we have explained previously. You can change the color. You can change the color of the uh, you know of the uh, of the sticky uh, of the sticky notes. Okay. So let's uh, bring back what we had earlier. Uh, you can actually show the author of the sticky note on on that sticky notes, right? So you can show the author of that note. Uh, and um, what can we do uh, next? Yeah, so you can add a tag, you can add like a, an emoji, you know, like a reaction kind of, okay, right? So people can also like, you know, click on that reaction, you know, and um, yeah, it makes it very interactive. So people can actually like, you know, click on this interaction to increase the number of counts, you know, on that particular sticky uh, notes. And uh, yeah, you can add a comment, you know, just like what uh, we could do. Uh, you can also change the fonts, the, the type of uh, fonts you're working with, right? And uh, that is it for the sticky notes. Yeah, so the next item is shapes, and we have you know, different shapes, right? We have the rectangle, we have, uh, this is the, um, let's see, this is the rounded rectangle shape, okay? Um, yeah, so this is the ellipse shape or the oval shape, the triangle, uh, diamond shape. So we have a bunch of shapes, and you can click on all shapes to give you even more shapes, right? So even more shapes, um, and you can even install more shapes, and that is why I love this. You can install more shapes. So if you are an engineer, for example, you can you know add more shapes, you know, from here. Uh, some of these items are locked though because uh, you are using a free account. But of course, you see you have a bunch of shapes for you know creating UML diagrams, data flow, uh, BPMN, which is basically a business process and model notations. You have ERD, you know, shapes. So you don't necessarily need to understand every single shape here. But uh, the idea is, um, if you understand the functionality, um, then definitely you know that you can, you know, get to use some of these shapes, right? I know some of these things because uh, I have used them, and uh, hopefully uh, one day you'll get to use them as well, right? Um, and they even give you a bunch of, uh, you know, like shapes for, um, of course, these are cloud-related stuff for engineers, right? So yeah, so your engineering team, uh, you know, you can you can advise your engineering team. Okay, why don't you join us on? Uh, you know, mirror, let's, you know, collaborate and uh, talk about, you know, some processes in here. And, uh, you know, they might want to give you excuses like um, we have our own tool because uh, most of your tools don't have, you know, the kind of shapes we use for diagramming. And of course, you can tell them, I mean, we have we have a bunch of those uh, shapes in here, right? So join us and, uh, you know, you can use uh, some of those shapes uh, right on mirror, right? So uh, those are, you know, the types of shapes or the extended, you know, shapes you can, uh, add to your file uh, if you're on the paid plan. All right, so these are a bunch of shapes. I'm going to take this off for now. And uh, next is, um, yeah, you have the connection line. So basically, let's assume we have um, this is an extra sticky notes. Uh, okay, so notes. Okay, so basically, you can connect you know, using these lines, right? So you can connect using these lines. Okay. Um, and we have uh, multiple types, you know, you can connect with, um, you know, the line with uh, an arrow. Uh, let's, let's do that. So you see, we also have a different type of connector here, right? So you see, we have different type of connector, uh, connector line. So you can play around with it and uh, you know, choose whichever uh, option works for you. Uh, we also have the pen tool, you know, and the pen tool has a bunch of customizations. It can work as an highlighter. It can work as, um, as an highlighter, it can work uh, for smart drawing, you know, as an eraser. So you can you can get an eraser from the subset of uh, your tools you have here. Um, you can also uh, use the lasso tool, and then you can set the width of uh, of 
the pen, right? So let's try it out with a simple pen too. You see, this is something quite simple. Uh, let's try to increase the reach, right? Uh, okay, so, and um, the eraser, you know, to clean this off, okay? And then uh, the highlighter, you know, to highlight items, right? And uh, yeah, so so go around and go, go ahead and play with these stuff. Uh, go ahead and play with them. Okay, so um, yeah, so we also have like comments. Uh, of course, I've explained that before, so you can drop a comment, right? Um, why do you uh, prefer adding emojis? Okay. And then you can just you know have this comment. So someone else can you know reply to your comments, you know, you can delete comments, you can add reactions to comments. So it's really interactive, right? It's really fun and interactive. Uh, you can also add a frame. So I'm going to take off everything we have so far. Uh, let us add a frame. So let's assume we're trying to you know come up with a very simple wireframe for a mobile application. You can do that here, right? You can do that here. And then uh, we have a very simple wireframe, you know, a very simple frame for a mobile device. You see, we have both multiple examples, right? For browsers, you know, your phone, your tablet, you know, different sizes that you can also adjust, um, you know, for A4 paper. So you can, also, you can also adjust the stuff. And um, I can decide to, you know, you know, add a shape, right? So this is basically how we come up with simple wireframes, right? So you can, you can start playing around with stuff like this you know, for your designs um, or for your, um, what, what do I call it, right? For, for your low fidelity uh, wireframe. So here yeah, you can just, Play around with this. Okay, so basically we're already, uh, you know, trying to come up with just a little sketch. Let's delete this uh, for now. Take off the objects as well. And uh, I believe you you understand, uh, you know, what I'm trying to explain. Uh, so by putting those items in the frame, you can actually move everything together because you know it is uh, bounded by a frame, right? So you can move everything together just like this. Okay. And um, yeah, you can also upload like, you know, uh, images you can upload. So we have what we call web clipper and I will show you because this is a very important factor. I love, you know, the functionality here. So uh, using a web clipper, uh, I think I have to install that extension first. Okay. So I probably would have to install that extension on the web or my Chrome and see the idea. You can take, uh, you know, using the web clipper, you can actually grab a certain portion you know, of your, um, uh, of, 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 that, of that particular page you're working on, you know, maybe like, like uh, uh, maybe you are on a particular page, you need that page inside mirror. Uh, let's, let's work with an example. So while this is installing, uh, let me show you what that is. We'll get back to that. Okay, I think it's asking, let's see. All right. So I'm going to click on this. Um, Let's go back. Okay. So I think that was installed successfully. I need to verify that please. Just a second, let's see. Install again. Okay, so I think probably this would work if we're uh, on, the, on the web dashboard. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to this. Let's see, let me refresh this page. Okay, so I think um, we'll, we'll probably, okay, yeah, okay. So the reason why it did not show up initially was because that page was already loaded. So um, so it said, it seems uh, that uh, you don't have as any mirror account. Oh yeah, so I, I have to log in on the web. Uh, I have to log in on the web. And uh, let me do that. Uh, okay, I have to log in. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to do that on this on the screen. Uh, so I'm going to simply I'm going to simply move that to a different screen, and I'm. Going to log in. Okay. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, let's see what happens. So you see, I can actually take a screenshot in here, you know, select a particular team, you know, and then uh, I can say, okay, I want this to appear. Uh, you know, take the entire page, right? So click the entire page, and you see, I'm actually able to click the entire page 
you know, I'm not the one scrolling, right? It's scrolling on its own. Huh? And it's taking uh, a, a screenshot or, you know, you call this on your mobile, a scroll shot. You know, the scrolling is happening automatically and uh, this uh, page, uh, you know, will be captured, right? Uh, if we go back, uh, if we go back to, let's see. Yeah, let's see what this is going to enter. Okay, so I think I was uh, connected to my team, I believe. Um, uh, let's see. Let, let's go back again. I think. Uh, let's try this again. So it said the screenshot will be saved into your library. Okay, loading teams. Just capture the visible area. Let's see. Okay, so this will be loaded into um, I, I was actually hoping that this would you know drop directly into our file, but uh, it keeps asking to install and said you haven't saved any clip file yet. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to proceed you know to check this out from the web. Uh, I think maybe I might have to refresh or probably close the application and open that up again. Uh, I'm not certain, but uh, you know the idea is um, when you take a specific clip, it's going to put that into your library, which means you can click on that item and you know have it show uh, shown inside that uh, web clipper you know list. Um, that did not show up on the desktop application. Um, probably it's a network problem or so, but let's let's verify yeah, let's verify that. So saved files. Okay, so um, sorry about the speed as well. You know, my network is pretty bad. So it said uh, you don't have any file, okay. Um, all right, so um, there's probably uh, an error with this. Uh, probably I would, I, would have to, I would have to check that later. I think maybe I'm, I am in the wrong, or this project is not in that specific team, right? That is my assumption. So, you know, when I created this, uh, I selected a team and uh, I need to be sure. So what, what you can do sometimes is, you know, try to verify. This is uh, currently under the top skill uh, uh, team, right? So, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a mistake. So I have to select top skill, and then I have to clip the entire page or maybe a specific area. So you see, you see that uh, the problem was that the, the image was stored in a different team, right? Uh, because I selected the wrong team at first. So these are some of the mistakes that you make at times. You just have to be sure on how to rectify such, uh, such issues. So uh, what I'll do now is you know, come back here, uh, go back to the web paper list, and uh, I think I'll rather do that on the web again. Let's see. Okay, let's let's go back to the web again. Um, this time around, I don't know if that would show up in here. Okay, okay. So I'm going to proceed to another um, another thing here. I don't I don't want us to waste too much time on this, but I'm also going to refresh this and you know verify uh, why that item is not. Um, is not being saved into the is not being saved into that library okay so we'll check this uh, we'll check this out later uh, but basically this uh, this is uh, the functionality so this is meant to be saved into the top skill uh, into the top skill um, you know workspace or, or, or library so yeah okay so i'm going to proceed we'll, we'll come back to this later on so we don't waste too much time here uh, let me proceed and i'll try my best to be faster uh, so you see, we have the, um, yeah, you can upload uh, items from your device, right? Like images, right? Uh, you can upload items from your device. I would, I would quickly um, show you an example. So I'm clicking on pictures. Uh, let's do Einstein. So let's just take a random picture from here. So we have this item, you know, we just uploaded this item uh, inside the mirror. It's still upload. Okay, I, I think it has finished uploading. So. You can always uh, you know customize this right you can crop this as well 
uh, but this is basically how to upload your images. You can also drag and drop, right? Uh, you can even upload via URLs. So uh, what is an example? Uh, what, what can we upload? Uh, I am simply going to click on this video I have open. I'm going to copy that video and then let's try to paste this in. Let's see what happens. So uh, this is able to, you're able to upload that video, right? So you see, I am able to upload that specific video, how to create a LinkedIn uh, a slideshow. And then you can expand, you know, the size. You can, uh, you know, increase or reduce the size. So basically, you can do that, and you can even play this from here, right? Uh, you can click on this, and this file or this video would be played from here. Uh, let me take off the sound. Hey guys, it's WhatsApp to Queenie and today. Okay. All right. So you see that we can actually clip uh, or embed, you know, YouTube videos uh, just like this. Um, yeah. Let's see. Okay. So this item was uh, not saved. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope uh, probably the problem is uh, the fact that I'm I'm using a free account. I'm not sure because I've done uh, you know web clipping before uh, with uh, Miro. So yeah, I can I will definitely figure that out later. All right, so you can upload items from uh, you know cloud storages like Dropbox, you know like OneDrive, like Google Drive. All you have to do is select this option and you know bring in the file here. Um, and uh, yeah, we also have a wireframing library. So let's assume you want to do wireframing here. You see we have a bunch of uh, you know, sample items like checkboxes, radio, search, drop down, you know, text fields, uh, buttons, links, you know, H1, and uh, you can scroll down to see even more items, right? So you don't have to always create everything from scratch, uh, profile icons, you know, images, right? Uh, toggle uh, buttons, you know, for on and off states, um, dialog boxes, right? So you have a bunch of items you can use here, even down to carousel. So you can actually um, you know, impute your carousel here. And of course, this is wireframing. Uh, let's, let's take off these items. So you're already doing wireframing. So you have a bunch of templates that you can make use of. And this is fun. It's fun to create these items here. You don't necessarily need to you know, do the stuff from scratch anymore. Uh, um, yeah, and then you even have more tools, right? You can paste an iframe code. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have a web page capture. This is another example. So I can just put in uh, HTTPS top universe.org. And this would capture the entire web page uh, and bring it up here, right? You see it's loading up. Uh, it's going to capture this item and bring it in here. Okay, so let's wait for that. It's taking a bit of, oh yeah, okay. So let's assume someone asks you uh, maybe as an assignment, you know, go ahead and uh, you know, re-implement uh, or, you know, uh, this is the previous website. We want you to bring in that website here and show us some parts where you think uh, you know uh, um, more work can be done. You know because uh, there are uh, some errors on the site, right? You can use a web capture. Something was supposed to show up. Here. I think it's a Discord um, iframe uh, you know view uh, that did not show up. Uh, but basically, you see you are able to bring this whole item here, and now you can start you know doing some sketch. You know what what do you what do you have here? You know, can you change this? You, you understand? Uh, this item is not so good. You know, so uh, this is just an example, right? So you can you can use this to um, communicate with your team and you know explain stuff. You know, let's let's change this item. Let's work on this item. I, I pretty much don't understand what you mean. Uh, this is highlighted. So can you check the highlighted parts and you know let's figure this out. Some things are not uh, you know looking so good. Um, and this is just an example, right? Um, I don't want you to go out there to say some things are not looking so good on this website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even if some things are not looking so good, yeah, kindly let us know. Um, so uh, this is just you know, a list of tools you can uh, you can put in like a chart, you know, mind map, uh, icon. We have like diagrams, right? Uh, diagramming tools, uh, stickers, you know. So check check them out. Check them out. We would love to play around with this tool. I believe I believe that uh, you can always revert, you know, undo and redo. You have those uh, shortcuts here as well, undo and redo. And basically. Uh, yeah, that is uh, a quick overview of, uh, you know, what you can do with uh, Miro. Um, yeah, so uh, we're we already, uh, so my name by, you mean by, your uh, number is from Kater. Yeah, that's from Jacob. Can you please explain what you mean by that? Uh, you know, the navigation. Are, are you referring to the navigation bar here, or you are referring to the navigation bar within the um, within the tool? I want to be sure. 
Uh, do you have any other questions? Please go ahead and ask your questions and I'll take your questions from the chats, right? I'm currently looking at the chat, so ask your questions if you have any. So you mean the tools panel. So uh, probably what you can do is, uh, you know, click on this item, navigation bar, and you can have all those items, you know, show up here, right? Uh, if that's what you mean. So you can have, you can, you can, um, you can click on this, you know, to see this set of items. Uh, you can also do that for the shapes. So where do we have the shapes yeah, right here? You can click on all shapes and then it brings out all the shapes, right? Uh, you can do the same for, um, I think the other item was, yeah, this one. So um, I think I brought out uh, a bunch of uh, diagramming and uh, wireframing shapes as well. So when you click on more, you're able to see some of those items, right? Okay, so do we have any other question, please? Drop your questions as fast as possible. As you can. Drop your questions if you have any. All right, guys. So um, I'm not seeing anyone dropping any questions. So my assumption here is um, you uh, you understood you know, some of the things I showed you here. Uh, remember, while framing library, you just have to click on this to show you those, uh, you know, uh, options. You know, you can, you can create those things and uh, you don't have to design them from scratch. So you just reuse them, right? And uh, yeah, so basically, um, I can't see other questions coming in apart from Jacob's uh, question. And I hope I answered you, uh, Jacob. So I think that should be all for now. If you have more uh, questions, you can always, you know, ask your questions in the uh, Discord uh, room. Right. Um, if you have anything to contribute or to add, Amaka or Emanuela, I would leave that. I would leave that for you to do. So, yeah, yes. Uh, from Jacob, you can use Mirror to do uh, wireframes. Yes, you can. So you can actually use Mirror to do wireframes, right? That's why you have a bunch of. And I use it a lot, right? I mean, it's faster than I can just, you know, especially when you're collaborating with someone. So we can we can be on a call, you know, within thirty minutes to you know forty minutes, and we can come up with a very fast, you know, wireframe. Uh, and I would say rather than Figma, it's up to you, right? The idea is to ensure that we teach you more than one tool. And, uh, you know, it's up to you to decide uh, which work, which option works for you, right? We have a lot of tools you can use for wireframe. I think one of the tools I enjoy using in the past was uh, Blastmic. Uh, I think that's what it's called. But after some time, I just enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, the comforts uh, from, um, from uh, Miro. So someone is saying, could you find tools on my page? Um, I don't think I, I understand what you mean by you couldn't find the tools. If you're just opening mirror, then you know, create a project, then you know, create a board. Once you open the board, the board you will see those list of tools on the side, on the left. Okay. All right. So um, we have more questions. Oh, awesome. Okay. Thank you, uh, Kazim. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing right now. So since we don't have uh, more questions, I think that should be all for now.